Hi, Sarah Bruna Bora. My name is Ramiro Espinosa, and I originally come from Argentina, as you already know. In case you wonder, is this country at the end of the American continent? I grew up during a period when the streets were abundant in interesting examples of sign painting. Argentina got a traditional school of sign painting that is called Filete Porteño. It originated as a way to decorate horse cars and later uh, trucks and urban buses. In the last 15 years, this has become a sort of graphical folklore related to tango and certain Buenos Aires neighborhoods like San Telmo. This background and the fact that I met in Argentina a couple of sign painters gave me a certain knowledge and awareness of the sign painting profession. In 2003, I moved to the Netherlands and settled in Amsterdam. One of its districts, the Jordan, has always been my favorite. It's one of the most beautiful parts of Amsterdam and full of interesting boutiques and very old bars. Walking down along these canals, I started to notice that many bar windows had a very intriguing kind of lettering that I never seen before. It was a very consistent style, and the letters had been carefully painted following the same model. And it was obviously not a typeface. <clears throat> at this moment, I was a student at the Royal Academy of Art in The Hague, so I asked that teachers and colleagues about this tradition, but nobody could tell me much about it. <clears throat> so I continued talking pictures and documenting all the windows and panels that I was finding in my walks and urban explorations. One year later, I asked a bar, a bar owner if he knew the painter behind these letters. This time I was lucky, the man knew the sign painter well and told, me, I told the person in the bar to show me his house. <clears throat> I was then taken to his apartment, located just 50 meters from the bar. This is how I came to meet Leo Beukelbon, who became the first source in my research. <clears throat> I recorded several interviews with him, but at some point I felt I needed to research further, so I decided to dig into the city photographic archives. Amsterdam City Archives are a great place for any researcher. It's a very well-organized institution and they keep a vast collection of pictures of the city since the invention of photography. The negatives were produced with large format cameras, so they store an enormous amount of information. That was very important because in most of the cases I needed to enlarge small areas of the negative. After analyzing a fairly large amount of pictures from different decades, I arrived to the conclusion that in the early 50s, someone had started painting the style I discovered. The style was very recognizable with just very minor differences with the example from present day. I also noticed the letter had been painted in bar cell in Amstel beer. It was another hint that could help me to identify the first painter of this mysterious script. <clears throat> but for time, I could not find any information about the sign painter from the 50s and 60s, but one day I read an interview published in 1984 in an Amsterdam magazine, and in this text, a senior sign painter telling about his letters commented, my work is frequently believed to be made by uh, J.W. No, my work is frequently believed to be made by J.W. Fisher, calligrapher and sign painter. The wonderful curly letters ca that can be found in different cafes were made by him. To me, it was obvious that he was talking about the same script, and he had wanted to credit the person behind it. 
So I finally had his name, and when I was about to start to call every Fisher in the telephone guide, <laughs> Annick Fisher, the daughter of Mr. Fisher, who is in the middle of the picture, sent me an email. Uh, she had read some of the information I had published on the internet and wanted to correct some facts. Thanks to her contribution, I was able to assemble this little paleographic puzzle. Jan Willem Josef Fischer was born in 1911 and passed in 1987. He was the son of, of Johannes Fischer, also a letter painter. He displayed artistic inclinations and wanted to attend an art school, but the limitations imposed by a numerous and working class family meant he had to start working with his father at the age of 12. In the year 1941, when he decided he had learned enough from his father, he opened his own painting business located in the Costacade Street in Amsterdam. In this workshop, the main and most profitable service was construction painting. Letter painting was his biggest passion, but it didn't generate enough income to fulfill his needs. He also had a numerous family and one of his sons had Down syndrome. His most important client for design painting work was the Amstel Brewery. The beer company paid for the sign of the bar selling their brand. So Fischer was sent to different cafes and bars around the city to paint the name of the bar, the prices, and of course, the Amstel logo. Painting this bar, he developed his very personal adaptation of the humanistic script practiced by the Dutch writing masters of the 17th century. Fischer allowed himself to be creative, and his letters soon departed from the historical models and became a style in its own merit. Crew letter means in Dutch curly letter, and it's a generic term for any swash strip. In, or in order to identify the style more accurately, I call the style Amsterdam's crew letter, which means Amsterdam's curly letter. But it wasn't the only style that he painted in the bars. While frequently he would combine them with a well-rendered fractal model adorned with the same spiral in swashes that he used in the italic crew letters. Today, few of his gig windows remain intact, but in them is evident the precision and grace of his strokes. Sadly, there are no surviving photos of Fischer painting his famous crew letters but some of his works in paper were kept by his family. He used to produce calligraphic commemorative documents, and in them we can see he combined the same crude letters and Dutch Gothic letters he painted in cafes. It's also interesting to point that uh, as the self-taught calligrapher he was, he didn't master the traditional pointed or brownie pens, resorting instead to work with ball pen. I tried to collect every surviving piece of lettering made by Fischer to document how it looks in the beginning and how the style evolved. This is a book cover designed by a famous design, a Dutch designer, Dick Bruna, um, with an early example of Fischer's cruel letters. The letters still look a bit clumsy and they lack the power of later examples. Another sign painted by Fischer at Café Elmer's Although it's not intact, it's evident the letter had been restored using masking tape. Some distinctive characteristic of the early crew letter can be seen, like an oversized circle in she, almost as big as an O. This image is coming from Café Hope. It's this old and beautiful cafe has many wooden cakes, all lettered by Wim Fischer. It's one of the best places where you can see his original works. And this is another work by Fischer I was able to find recently. A carpenter sent me an email and invited me to see some signed Fischer, who was a friend of his father, has painted in his family workshop. 
This is Senior Green Fisher in front of his house in the last years of his life. He painted signs for Amstel until the year 1968, when the company was acquired by its main competitor, Heineken. Although his main client was lost, he continued painting for all clients and friends. He died in 1987 of a heart attack. One of the myster mysteries surrounding Fischer was his source of inspiration. I could see the influence of the Dutch Golden uh, Age calligraphy, but I wanted to know more precisely what text he has used as a reference. Inspecting the few documents his family still preserves, I found a battered copy of a Dutch, book, a Dutch copy book published in 1885. The title can be translated as Letters and Their Basic Forms Adapted for the best, from the Best Sources for Painters, Stonemasons, Engravers, and for the Education in Art and Craft Schools. It was a long title. The author was Peter van Looy Jr. and in this volume there were some few examples, some few pages printed with the letters that had beyond doubt served as Fischer models. This is one of the pages in his possession. <coughs> um, this is a pristine copy that, uh, uh, that was photographed at the library of the University of Amsterdam. Although Peter van Looy attributed the original model to Johannes Heufelman, in reality, this is a copy of a plate of uh, Jan van der Velde from his most famous book published in 1605. So, a mediocre copy of Jan van der Velde plate has been the model for the capitals. But what about the lowercase letters? In my opinion, they were quite original and not so similar to the ones that Jan van der Velde had written. The answer was in this plate from the book by van Looy. The lowercase model has all the peculiarities that can be found in Fischer's model, but in an initial stage. Also in this book, there were examples of Gothic letters, almost identical to the Gothics that Fischer had painted during his life. Even more, the origin of his swashes and the way he used to ornament them with little perpendicular lines can also be found in Van Sloy's book. However, I was still curious about this Johannes Heufelman, the main influence in Van Sloy's model. He was not a very famous calligrapher and I didn't know much about his work. So I went to Harlem to see one of the three copies of his book that still survive today. The book was published in 1659 in Harlem and the title can be translated as Didactic ABC Written for the Benefit of the Young. And this is the original lowercase model as it was printed by Heufelman. Here we can compare on top the, um, the copy from Peter van Looy made in 1885 and below is the original Heufelman. The two alphabets are similar but are a closer inspection. It is evident that van Looy took liberties and allowed himself the addition of some alternate and variation from his original model. Noticeably, in Heffelman's model, the peculiar she that would later become one of the cruel letter's most distinctive characteristics is not present at all. Although in Peter van Looy's book this script is identified as old Holland writing, in the 17th century these kind of letters were rightly considered Italian and name as such in Jan van der Velde books. Its, its true origins are in the reform chancery hand popularized by Jan Francesco Cresci in the second half of the 16th century. He and his Italian followers, like Ludovico Curione, published books where many of the characteristic details of the Amsterdam Secure Letter can already be found. As a curiosity, I also wanted to show this example by Stefan Kanchev, a famous Bulgarian designer. 
I found it in the Albert Kapper book, The Art of Lettering, published in the 70s. It's a Cyrillic capital alphabet that belonged to the same Amsterdam secret letter family and was possibly influenced by Jan van der Velde. It proves that despite this style of chancery hasn't been very popular among calligraphers and lettering artists in the last hundred years, from time to time designers were interested in its exuberant beauty. Leo Beukebon was born in 1943 in Amsterdam in the Pipe District. Uh, from an early age, he showed interest in drawing, and as a teen, he occasionally uh, made some pocket money by painting simple signs for the numerous stores in his neighborhood, where one of the most important Amsterdam markets, the Albert Kapp Markt, is located. He attended a vocational graphic school and trained as a timesetter. In the evenings, he took an extra course on layout. More or less at the same time Amstel was sold to Heineken, this company started to look for a new sign painter because their painter was retiring. Leo Beukewon was offered this position and then he started to paint Heineken bars and later also the Amstel bar that had been lettered by uh, Pim Fischer. According to his own words, Leo soon had to start replacing windows that had been painted by Fischer with his script. Occasionally, also bar owners asked for new signs in the same style already used in the cafe, so Leo had to learn how to imitate it. I must say, he did it very well. Although his letters are usually less compressed and more rounded than the letters painted by Fischer, sometimes it's very difficult or impossible to distinguish who the painter was. The exact method he used to copy and learn the style is one of the mysteries that Leo prefers to keep for himself. I guess he probably took pictures of the signs or traced them and with this model later pra practiced at his workshop. But no matter the method he employed, the, it was very successful, and soon his letters could be found in many parts of Amsterdam. He was also invited to paint several bars and stores in Belgium, in, and in hand, still some of his work can be found in acceptable condition. Leo never met Fischer, and according to him, he never even uh, knew his name until I told him the story of his predecessor. Neither he knew the, the existence of the book by, uh, of Peter van Looy. Some could argue that Leo Beukebon merely copied Fischer's alphabet, but Beukebon was also a creative sign painter, able to paint other very personal and original styles, like this very well-executed Roman that he consistently, consistently employed in several stores in Amsterdam. Many windows painted by Leo are gorgeous and exhibit very interesting alphabet designs. Heineken stopped paying for sign painting services in 1989. Despite his bigger client was gone, Leo continued painting for all clients as Fischer had done it in the 60s. Sadly, in 2003, Leo Beukebon suffered a brain stroke and as a result was left partially paralyzed. He had to stop painting. Now he lives in a house in the Pipe district in Amsterdam where he likes to receive the occasional visit of type and sign painting enthusiasts. After Leo Beukebon's stroke forced him to retire, nobody continued this tradition in a serious way. Many sign painters had already retired in the 80s due to the advent of plotted uh, vinyl lettering services. The few still painted letters by hand didn't seem to have the talent needed to paint the beautiful crew letters. In this image, the top, is, uh, the top line is obviously an original work by Beukebon, 
and below the word cafe was painted by someone else without much care or knowledge. And this is another W's work by the same sign painter. And this is an also a different attempt to imitate Amsterdam secret letters made by, by a clumsy sign painter. This is another sad but very frequent situation. A bad sign painter attempting to restore an original sign but without the skills and proper research about the design of the letters. The forms are distorted with a wrong contrast and incorrect design. The stroke has also lost all their original grace. Another example, below is the original signs and on top is how it looks after one waiter decided to repair himself the damage done by a cleanup work with a sandblaster. <laughs> Again, the grace and beauty of the original letters was lost. In 2012, I published Krull, a typeface based on the Amsterdam Krull letter. I wanted to design a script font inspired by these archaic forms, but it wasn't my intention to replace the hand lettering work on Amsterdam's windows. On purpose, I made a disconnected script with an increased contract and a less slanted angle. Has been, Krull has been well received and I have found it in a number, a number of design pieces like this book cover or these banners from a Dutch fashion and fabric design company oriented to the African market. And also in this uh, poster designed by Donald Beckman, who I think is in the public, <laughs> uh, for a songwriting contest. And Krull has also recently uh, been used in an opening spread of the Saturday's magazine of one of the main newspapers in the Netherlands. But despite I think Krull has a role to play in graphic design, in some occasions I think it has been used in an unwanted way. In this case, a sign painter who advertised himself as an old school sign painter made a sign using my font and then render it with a brush on the glass. But the sign still looks like my font and it does not really resemble the real rule letter from Amsterdam. The painter even produced a little film where he is pretending uh, painting the sign from scratch. To me these situations are sad and dishonest and it troubles me that I am also in part responsible. This year I was finally able to finish my book and publish almost all the information I've been collecting about this tradition. I did my best in making this book the kind of book that we letter lovers like. Hardcover, well bound, with a nice cloth and of course with a custom lettering title embossed on the cover. The book has two main parts. First, an essay with the history and origins of the crew letters and a second part with beautiful photograph by Rob Becker. I am glad I invited Rob to take the pictures of the book. He went much further than merely documenting all surviving examples. He managed to capture the aesthetic that surrounds them. In Rob's pictures, the signs are linked to its human and architectonical context. I really appreciate the fact that he was able to create a photographic homage to places we both love, the old cafes of the Dutch capital city. Almost every surviving example of the crew letter was photographed in Amsterdam, Maastricht and Gent, and in some cases uh, Rob was just in time to take the pictures before the windows were blanked or replaced uh, for different reasons. So, my advice for people willing to publish books on public lettering is uh, let a good photographer do his job 
and in the end your book will look less technical and have much more artistic value. After the publication of the book, several events precipitated. One important part of it was the crew letter model I carefully drew for future sign painters so they could copy it and practice. More or less at the same time of the preparation of the book, a group of young sign painting enthusiasts was created in Amsterdam, and they started to practice to organize workshops to revive the activity in the Netherlands. Some of them are starting to paint rather decently, so when I was approached by um, an advertising company which told me they wanted to have all their meeting rooms lettered with crew letters, I partnered with one of them and I drew a set of lettering works as far to the original style as I could. In the end, I have to add some extra swashes because, well, uh, the client was uh, an advertising agency and they wanted more swatches. Anyway, I tried to be subtle so the original style was respected. The, the company works in an old um, uh, place where they used to keep horses, I think, and they, so it's very strange, but uh, the, the, all the, the meeting rooms, rooms are named after the, the famous uh, horses that were kept in this place. So, Jasper Andres, member of the Amsterdam Sign Painter Group, painted the lettering works carefully. I am quite satisfied with the final results and experience. I think it's the first time that someone besides Fischer and Beckerbon has painted crude letters with craftsmanship and respect from the past. Reviving the, reviving the Amsterdam's crude letters is an ongoing project, and there are more crude letters assignments scheduled in the coming month. A lot of knowledge has been lost, but I am confident that the production of the new generation of sign painters will continue improving, and there will be many new crew letters in the future. It made me really happy that this research has played a role in rescuing an almost forgotten lettering style and raised awareness about this novel craft. I sincerely hope that my research and efforts will inspire other people in different countries to try to preserve their local lettering traditions. Thank you. <laughs>